Good morning and welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church service under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Richard L. Stryker III. We pray that something said or done during the service will give you peace. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Good morning, people of St. Paul. Good to uh, see you here this morning. We will uh, begin with our call for worship. If you would stand. Come, let your hearts be open to the Lord today. Let our spirits be ready to feel God's power and love. Let go of all the things that bind you.
So when David relaxed, he, you know, he was settled and everything else. I am living in a palace. You see, David had noticed that his place was much, not much nicer. So Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. For the Lord is with you. He added that piece there. For the Lord is with you. I guess he took the liberty of thinking that surely God must be happy. That if somebody can think about what God has done for them, and the person wants to tell God, thank you, I just think God should be pleased. The Lord is with you. Now you see, Nathan was a prophet, but he was also a trusted advisor to the king. You know, every king, every president, every parent, every friend needs somebody trustworthy who can tell you the truth Amen. and not have to worry about your relationship or you can worry about losing a job. Everyone needs a neighbor. So if you don't have one, then go in search of one. Go cultivate one. Tell one of your friends, hey, you can be my neighbor. So Nathan was that kind of friend and advisor. But when Nathan went home and he went to sleep, God knocked on Nathan's dream where he said that he knew you, you, the, the information you give David is not correct. You will have to go back to him and tell him not to build a house for you. You need to learn. Not to build a house for you. I've seen your house, God, and you need one. No, you're not going to build a house for me. Go ahead and tell my servant, David, this is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build me a house. I need a house, but you are not the one. First Chronicles 28, in fact, gives us a clue as to why God didn't want for David to build a house. Verse 28, uh, chapter 28 tells us, verse 3, But God said to me, because you, you know, you got it. God said to me, No, you are not to build a house for my name, because you are a warrior and have shared them. Now, hopefully, when God tells us no, it's not for such dramatic action in our heart. But God can still tell us no, but they can use it. Today, then you will pass on, the, in a way, you will pass on the baton of building this temple to your descendant. Notwithstanding, God saying you will pass on the baton, or you are not the one, God is very much a single with David's thinking. Because this is what the Lord Almighty says. The Lord Almighty says, in the past, I took you from the pasture, I took you from tending the sheep. Same reason why David wanted to build a house, because God had been good to him. God said, yes, you are correct. The present, David, you are over my people because I keep you over my people. God will bless again. Yes, you are right there. I have cut off all your enemies from before you. In fact, the Lord said to them, in the future, I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men on earth. I will provide a place for my people Israel and I'll give them a home. I will give you rest from all your enemies. So past, present, future, God is blessing, God has blessed, God is blessing, God will bless David. God said, all of those reasons, it is right for you to want to bless me back. Sometimes we forget how far we've come, we forget what God has done for us, we forget, forget what God is doing for us even now, and we forget to say, Lord, I want to bless you. David understood that God was deserving of his praise. So are you able to trace God's goodness towards you? Because there's a song, 
from long ago is called countable blessings. Remember that? Name them one by one. Count them many blessings. Name them one by one. See what the Lord has done. You know, counting your blessings allow us to nurture, like David, a spirit of gratitude. A spirit, because when we count our blessings, we realize God has been good to us. Yeah. It also helps us not to be fearful of the future. Because what God has done, God will still do. God has not brought you this far to you. I'm glad you with me, church. God has not brought you this far to leave you. So in case you have not known this really this message, we've given you two assignments already. One is find a trusted confidant, a truth teller for your life's journey. And also cultivate a life of gratitude, of thankfulness. God, you've been good to me, I want to. And if God doesn't need anything from us, you know, that's amazing. So, therefore, how do we bless God? We bless God by blessing other people. You know, God doesn't need anything from us. But there are others who need it. And Jesus said, what you do to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. God offered David a promise. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish a throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and just the fathers can chastise children, I will do that too, and he will be my son. So Nathan told all of these things to David, and lo and behold, David took it well. In fact, in other readings, we discover that even though David did not build a tent, he actually put all the resources together that Solomon would need to build a tent. So he, he took it well. But not only did David take it well, I believe that there is something rather comforting to know that our life's work, our projects, our dreams, our desires do not have to end when we slow down. I find that rather comforting. David, you're not going to build a house, but the house will be built. Your dream will be fulfilled. So what is it that you're thinking about that you've been working on that maybe may never get sacrificed? May never get accomplished in your lifetime or my lifetime. But if you pass a baton to the proper person or persons, that project, that ministry, that area, that thing will continue to go on. That is what God said to David, and I find that rather comforting. Think about life's journey as a linear four by ten, four by one hundred relay. There will be at least competing and are competing in Tokyo right now in various events. Whereas for swimming, four by one hundred show there of Ryan Murphy, Michael Andrew, Caleb Dressel, and Zach Apple. They delivered. Uh, uh, swimming time, the relay time in three, I guess that's three minutes, 26.78 at the Tokyo Olympics. All of that was saying they set a new world record from the American team in the, uh, in the relay. And in their case, they were passing the tunnel, obviously, but it's still passing from one person to the other. So you, you get that. Now, at the time of this sermon, we don't know the result for a track and field 4 by 100. But there are world records for men and women that we can look at and see. For example, Jamaica in 2012, the Jamaican, the Jamaican team set a new world record along with uh, Usain Bolt. It was his, I don't know what it's like, right? 36.84 seconds. New world record, four by one hundred. Well, I also brought for us 
today, the women from the United States, they set a new work record in 2012 also for the women, 40.82. But each of the first three runners, each of the first three had to look beyond self, running as fast and as efficiently as they could during their portion of the race. The starting runner in lean five has to keep in mind that lean one is really on the same level. It's a psychological thing. If you think you're ahead, you may not run fast enough, but when you make that curve, you discover, ooh, this person is really ahead of me. So you, you have to keep the first person, you got to keep that in mind. Each runner of the relay has to be able to say, like Paul, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, each transition calls for what, what, what is called a same handoff. And you know, a little bit hard to see there, but they had to do it in a way where that baton did not drop. In the transition, they are both running together. I don't know if you know this thing. The person that you're about to hand it to already started a little bit of a jog and got it already in motion. So it's not it's not waiting to stand it. Hey, oh, okay, I got it. You <laughs> good. I'm done. I'm done. They are already moving. In a safe handoff, you don't want to drop that baton. In a safe handoff, you want to hand the baton to someone that you trust, that you've trained with. Someone who is training alongside you in your ministry in life. All I'm saying to you is that as you do whatever it is that God has called you to do, don't you have to wait till you feel like that at the end of your journey to say, who am I going to hand this over to? There ought to be somebody running alongside you at some point of your journey so that when you hand that baton over to him or hand that baton over to her, you already know that they're going to carry it on because you trust them. Each of these actors that trust the first, that's why they run so hard and so fast and the best they can during their portion because you know the rest of the team is counting on them. Likewise it is with us in our lives or in our ministry or whatever it is. We need to find people that we trust and we be able to pass it on to them. And what by they will run that race that is set before them. And when their time is over, you know, it doesn't have to be in a place. So sometimes you just come to a different stage in life and you're moving on to something else. But even in that something, when you move to a different stage, you don't need to let whatever you are going to drop or founder. You can hand it to somebody else and you can watch from the sideline and be cheering on and say, look what good deeds that person is doing. To be able to cheer them on. Hebrews, in fact, talk about those who have walked before us and they us. Maybe you are also training to be a recipient. Now, we talk about handing it over to someone. But what about when you dare to receive? Then, likewise, you've got to be equipping yourself so that when somebody hands you the baton, you are ready, you are able, you are capable, you are equipped in order to keep on moving. You don't want to stop off, you don't want to quit. You want to just keep on, keep the pace going so that your tenure is served well, then you give it up to somebody else. But how about life is all about? And when I, when I read this, you know, you're like, he got all of that out of, out of God saying to David, hey, you're not the God. Oh, because David, David is, look, you're not going to be in with somebody else. And that somebody else needs to be equipped. The women of 2012 knew the brutality of them. Are there people you can count on to keep things moving? And if not, then that's a good time to begin to call to them. You know, sometimes you call to them people and they don't, they don't work out and you got to find That's why you're going to have one and one in the week, by the way. With a message from God through nature, David had to look beyond himself. He said, I had it in my heart to build a house as a place of rest for the ark of the covenant. 
covenant of the Lord. For the footstool of our God and our man plans to build it. However, the actual building, though, was put up by Sodom. Which mentioned I have a dream big? Yes. And then when the time is right, pass on the baton. God bless you. by today's worship service. We encourage our St. Paul family, friends, and those looking for a church home to join us each week for our virtual church experience. Please like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. If you would like to visit us in person, we are located on 1500 6th Avenue North, Birmingham, Alabama, 35203. Our phone number is 205-252-3236. Thank you and have a blessed week.